Hello everyone and welcome back to round two back nine action of our MPO League card here at the 2023 Discraft Great Lakes Open, the D-Glo, presented by Grip6. Playoffs are in effect here. We've got four rounds. Big Berry commentary, of course, bringing you all the action. 150% of the normal points of the Disc Golf Pro Tour as we are jockeying for position to get into the Disc Golf yeah. Pro Tour Championship. This event is obviously really important for those players who are at the top. Even though they have a guarantee in there, they are trying to get the last eight seeds to try to get the buy all the way to the... Well, it's not even a buy anymore because we no. have a different yeah. system. We have the strokes. So it's all about... Yeah, so this is very, very important stuff. But obviously the people who are on the bubble, I believe you are one of those people. Bubble boy. Trying to get into the big tournament, obviously, at the end of the season. Kevin Jones off to a great start in the uh, front nine here in the round two. And Eagle is just one shot back of him, just like Chris Dickerson. But a lot of players are right there. That three-stroke cushion they had to start the round is now gone as we head into the incredibly difficult back nine. Let's see what Kevin's going here. Looks like he might be going with the flex shot or the hyzer. I like the hyzer play in a lot of ways. Tell me about it. I think that it's a good shot to get to that left side, and I like the left side more than the right side. You can actually access it. Even if you don't get a huge tee shot, you still have the lane. You still have the alley to work with. Okay. This is also the way to break the hole, but you got the low ceiling, and you have to really be just absolutely crushing it to get over the hill, but under the ceiling, and keep it in between the left and right side of the fairway. What do you think Brad's got? A little Annie to flat to turn, digging this is into like, the hole. This is like a 12 out of 10 birdie for Brad. Like I'm, I'm gonna say this is a hole that Brad can birdie for sure, but nine times out of ten probably doesn't. Okay, that's just, I don't know. It's my thoughts on it. He might disagree with me strongly. Simon, however, is just guaranteed himself a birdie nearly. A drive like that is so good. Look at the difference between what. He just almost got a bird. What, that was looking pretty good. That was a good lay down for sure. But what Brad had to do there versus when we get to Simon's drive, look what he has left. And just look at the difference in the difficulty. Look how lucky this is. Well, does he get it? No, that's so far still. Jump up Jones m might be activated though. It's too, deep, deep so CT far, yeah. and uphill. No, I mean, it's not easy. Is this stable enough? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I think it's a splice. Uh, the same reaction on the ground that we saw from Calvin in round one, too. That's pretty interesting. But this is like kind of where Ricky was in round one. Kind of a eerily similar mirror. Oh, a little high. But he has the opportunity to go high. You know oh, what I'm saying? Sure. He's, he's so far in the gap that he can actually punch it up versus everyone else has to throw kind of like a nose up distance shot, which is so tricky. Yeah, it turned into a very, very easy hole right there. I mean, there aren't many holes that you can actually break down with one tee shot on this entire course, especially all the par fours. But this is one of them. Yeah, I'd say this one's 17. You can cover a lot of ground and make pretty easy. I saw somebody do it today. Oh, no, 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 no. Simon. That will make you feel feelings. Bradley Williams is smiling right now. Yeah. I don't know why, but well, he's listening to us right now, and then oh, you okay. compared him to Simon and said yeah, Simon okay. had a guaranteed birdie, and he was dead, and oh, then all of a sudden gosh. they got the I mean, same score. I guess I'll take credit for holding one of the best players in the world accountable for. <laughs> I mean, that's a putt. He does not miss, but apparently he does sometimes as do we all. So with that birdie, Eagle ties things up with Kevin Jones. Barilla, eight under through 14. He has a chance to yeah. go super low. Anything <laughs> really Eight low. under is course record. I and mean, this is a completely yeah. different course than we've played in the past. So we're looking to see, does anyone get to double digits this week? Hole 11, par three, 442 down the hill. This is a sidearm all the way. Punch the gap with a something... 
neutral to overstable or flex something down this gap heading to the right just slightly lots of speed almost trying to throw it into the ground this even Eagle. could be going too far all hyzer yeah i think it's six percent and it's just gone 75 feet past the basket i don't get it eagle's forehand is reconstructed it doesn't have the power it used to have wait no never mind that's ridiculous uh, how did he get, generate that much power i don't get it i don't know but you don't want to do that no it, what it's you not want a good to do shot is this yeah this is this is perfect flexing down the middle this is looking go really, in. really good oh my goodness go in Whew. really really good how'd that miss slow motion please yeah that's gonna thank you thanks for the replay that go. just hazard below the bucket by about a foot did it oh yeah. my goodness wow yep that would have hurt that basket and if you did see the two baskets in the drone flyover, this is the third and final hole of the A placements that we are playing this week. So we play it final round? I don't I think we're doing B A A B. Okay. I, this is what the everyone will be playing in the third round as well. Okay. Brad Williams comes up short and right. Not a bad tee shot, but he's left outside C one. I just do what they tell me when I'm on the tee. I don't know anything about anything but i do know that that caught some limage otherwise <laughs> it was looking great another 80 footer for simon mm -hmm. he's got to be able to pop one he's good for one around a long one around that looks good a little high mm. just barely off the mark but good line good call from you almost made you look really really smart Eagle is definitely out first, but Brad is just going out of speed of play. And that's the way that you do the speed of play thing. You just get out of the way quickly. You make your one putt, and then you just go to the next hole. He's excited about this. You don't see a lot of emotion out of Brad. But in this one, he gave it a nice little fist bump. You can see his shadow right there because he didn't want to show it. <laughs> I... I'm shocked to see that this is the third easiest hole. Eagle from 80 feet long. I don't get that. How did he get there? That is crazy. It's a great shot for the other spot. It really is. He's probably no more than 20 feet from the other pin place, placement. 2.71 average. I guess it just wasn't yielding many bogeys. Yeah, only three bogeys on the day. And that's, I mean, and just enough birdies. Actually, quite a few. A third of the field, 24 players able to pick up the birdie two. And we just saw two of them, and Kevin Jones almost got himself a nice little one pack. That's going to retake the lead. These Ooh. guys are going back and forth. Tried to come out a little bit. Not surprised to see Chris Dickerson doing well. Saw the play with the the champs a couple days ago with Burt nice. Kreischer and we hosted that event with the pleasure of being there and watching that and he just went off and it was a pretty impressive thing he looked very controlled on those nine holes that we played power hyzer that's yep. all you need to know about this one power hyzer but you have to hit a gap if you flip it up a little bit it's not going to hurt but I don't think a player with the speed of Simon or Eagle need to or Kev yeah, Kev's going all hyzer too. He hits trees and gets yep. almost in the circle. Jump putt Jones is be activated, like you said before. Yep, just outside C1, I think. Maybe just inside. It's close. Brad, too tight. Mm -hmm. Very common mistake. Could be in danger of another bogey. And those limbs get a little bit limier every year. They're just kind of reaching out. I think Eagle has to take some off here. Oh, I mean, has he's, to, he's right? certainly taking some off. It, like, whether that means he's going with a slower disc. Well, now, this is DD3. He's just doing a little prior hole. Or do you think he's just throwing his most stable? As well, hard as That DD3 can. that he threw in the last hole was certainly not his most ever stable one. That yeah. thing flipped up and went forever. This is not it. Surprise miss. The height was wrong, and the angle was wrong, and the release was a little bit early. A lot of things Simon can try to fix going into the third round on this one this is a tricky upshot left to right needs height that looks like pretty good height yeah very good height 
and good commitment. Hopefully he didn't hurt his hand too much on that follow through. Simon would be the kind of guy that would just get a little bit frisky here. You, you, you kind of have this, you're kind of drawn into the, oh, I can run it because it, it slopes up behind the yeah. basket. But if you hit the cage or the basket here, from that angle, it's okay. But if you did it from the downhill angle, more than likely it's coming right back to you. These two exchanging blows, one after another, lead change, yeah, tie, tie, yeah. lead change, lead change, tie. I wonder how close they would be to perfect right now with the best disc doubles. Mm. If I played that with anybody, we would be at whatever they're at. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I actually, you know what? I was looking at your scores and my scores yeah. for this round. Yeah. And we shot six under. Really? Yes, we did. That's awful. The, the, the <laughs> holes where I bogeyed, you birdied, and vice versa. AB's beating us on the front nine. Nice. <laughs> I am so. It wasn't an impressive score. I wasn't trying to say, no. wow, listen to this. It was just, I don't know why. I don't normally do this, but I just happened to see that we just never took the same scores That's on funny. any of the holes. It's because of our um, game we play. We won't say. It's our secret game. Hole 13, par 3, 526, straight down the hill. Through this gap, sidearm is going to be the play or a late flip backhand. It's a very, very narrow window you have to hit all the way down. Narrow, narrow fairway. You're going to see a lot of people in the rough, typically. Sidearm flip up is the way that I see a lot of people park it, even though, shout out to Ben Calloway, who put it three feet with a buzz today. Whoa. Which was I know you played with him. Very, 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 very impressive. And you played with Gavin Babcock as well. Yeah, he made a nice long one on 82 it. Eighty-two footer. You had two birdies on your card. And there were only two birdies all of yesterday. As Eagle's gone way too wide. Kevin Jones, this is a good tee shot catching those rocks at the top of the hill. From there, it's just kind of one of those green light goes yeah. from 110 feet. Yeah, and I was like 40 feet, and I threw it to the next tee pad. Oh, that's so. Great. It was a close putt. Yeah. The next tee pad is about 80 feet left of mm -hmm. the basket for anyone keeping track at home. Yeah, came close. Bradley <laughs> Williams is Wide in left, yeah. the junk. Can we call it the jungle? The jungle, yeah. Simon, the roller play has some potential. I've never seen it actually work all the way down there. <laughs> and he has put himself in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was that bad of a shot. He's just not mm -mm. going to be parked. He's just a little bit. I think he's down around the corner, though, that initial yeah. tree. It's fine. He might not know that, though. Green light from where Kevin is. A little backstop. Mm -hmm. But you can get tricky. It goes a little far back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have like, good touch oh, with no. it, it's not going to be a gimme. Kind of a green light opportunity for Brad as well, just not quite on the mark. Simon's made about seven million of these. Just not good height. height. Yeah, good height though. Yeah. You gotta be. I, I I wonder this all the time when Simon's throwing shots like that in a tournament. Is he in a different mental space? Is he in a golf mental space? Or is he in a trick shot mental space when on those type of throws? Can he go back and forth right, and put himself in a position where he can just dial it up and try to make one? True, because like the trick shot guy is fearless. Yes. There's no fear, no repercussions. There's no penalty I just, for I, a miss. But I, in, in golf, there is. So I yes. wonder if that holds him back a little bit. I asked him to try to ace a hole at Ledgestone, hole seven, the one that... Marweed aced. Mm -hmm. I asked him to ace one. He said, get your camera out. And he just hit the cage first time. No other shot takes. It's just like, you can just do that. You can just dial that up on the cue. What the heck? 
I gotta just say something, man. Wow, the field figured that hole out. Nine players birdied that one. That's a huge number compared to round one where we only had two birdies. So good job to the field figuring it out on a much windier round. Hole 14 is just the distance contest. It's really all there is to it. You have to throw far. You have to be accurate. Eagle is not quite knocking down the accuracy thing, but my goodness, the hillside gives a huge break. As you can see, that hit the hillside and roll its way right back in bounds barely. Not that accurate. You don't have to be that accurate. This is a pretty big <laughs> hit. This is a big fairway. This is a, this is a distance contest. And right now, Kevin Jones is leading. Good flip up, kept it down the middle. It was even more of a distance contest before they put the out of bounds on the left and right side this year. Hurry. Brad's also in danger. If it doesn't start getting overstable, it does. Simon's on six hole par streak. Unfortunately, thanks to the very short miss on 10. He'd like to get things going here with a good drive. He is in good position off the tee. Not a lot of danger going up this hill. There is out of bounds too far dead straight, but these guys will put it on hyzer and not have to worry about that. An eagle up first. Look at this, Paul. Wow. Very good. That is un believable amount of power to climb that hill and then also have the touch and accuracy like you're talking about that is just special stuff the ob does cut away once you start climbing the hill it breaks off pretty severely left is like you said there's not much danger of going left side as far as finding ob i didn't even know it was there till today the ob long yeah yeah that was i did get to see you throw ob and it just barely crept over it Really? Just barely. I didn't know I could throw it that far. <laughs> I saw it crest the hill, and I saw the color of the disc, and I was like, that was Paul's nuke. Kevin connecting on one of those last. You probably pushed it OB. What? Here's Simon. <laughs> Here's Simon. Change the subject. That's not very good for S Simon. Yeah, well, he's just kind of finding a lull right now. Good effort from range, but that is a very frustrating second shot, I would imagine. Great distance off the tee. Kevin Jones, not his best effort from range. Mm. Brad Williams, not his best distance, best effort from range. Eagle McMahon. <laughs> Barely getting away with hitting the hillside and rolling back in bounds, and he's rewarded with a bull's eye birdie from just an absolute marvelous approach. Makes it look too easy, Paul. Yeah, yeah, that looked that looked pretty pretty easy, honestly. Looks repeatable. So pars for the other three, and Eagle joins thirteen other players as they pick up the birdie on this hole, which I, I don't like to call this the 12th easiest or the seventh easiest hole, but it is. And I don't like that because there's nothing about the hole that says easy. Easy to me is like, oh, I can get the birdie. It's just easy because some people got birdie, but not many people took the bogey mm -hmm. is really how, how that's broken down. Eagle. Nothing easy takes, about this one. Takes the lead again. <laughs> Hole 15, hardest hole in the course. This requires a 500 foot drive and then a 460 foot approach. Figure that one out. Yeah, with a straight right to left crosswind. Have fun. Eagle has pushed it too far straight and he is going to be in Scramblevania. That was a terrible city name. I can do much better, but that's a bad place to be. Kevin is throwing a great shot. 
His reward will be a low ceiling, incredibly difficult approach. Brad Williams with the inside hyzer, and that's where you'd like to be if you like getting par at best, because it's really not approachable from back that far. Simon, this the aggressive line here is the way to get the birdie, and man, that is really good. That Depending actually, on his lie. Yeah, that actually opens up like a straight shot, like a straight, and you can keep it on a hyzer as well. And that's going to be in that 450 range. Eagle just trying to lay up. Putter, Annie, miss a, miss a person. And he does miss a person. He misses every single person in the world. He actually missed 8 billion people right there. Impressive. This is a well-shaped shot as well. Oh, look at that. Just kind of... Hovering above the ground as it gets to the bottom of the hill. Easy approach from Brad, or for Brad coming up from there. And let's see what Simon has. Yeah, he has a hyzer in, kind of. This looks heavy on gets the hyzer. flip to flat. Oh, oh man. Oh, wait, he rips. That's right. Forgot. Oh, that's right. You kind of forgot with the approach on 14, but man, what a good... If you're going to birdie one of the two, birdie 15. Oh, no. This is a rolly of the wrist. Straight left. Tree. That's not bad from there, honestly. He'll be able yeah. to get something. I feel like... Kevin gets the opportunity to throw shots that other people wouldn't because of the flippy disc he does carry with him in his bag. But sometimes it does become a problem. He tries to get a little bit too creative in some places that don't require that much creativity. I think he's going to have some sort of sidearm from there, like a sidearm flex or... Yeah, I mean, I'm saying he should be able to scramble from here, but from his last shot, yeah, I don't think that the, the flippy forehand was really a great option. And now... I think that was... Was that backhand or sidearm? It was a flipple hawk. Yeah, good old flipper. Oh, wedged in the ground, so it must have been a grenade. A grenade, oh. a grenade -a hawk. And was that out of... Turn or was that just a really long grenade? Long grenade. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. That's a scary putt for Bradley. Very terrifying putt. Kevin can this would be a great save. Yes, I mean, it would. Circle's edge, shut off the wow. rim and in. That's grenade. What that nose, that's what nose up will get you when you're putting uphill. Help you sometimes just barely get enough to get over that rim. That is a great strike for Brad, like you said. That is just nothing but bad news after that putt misses the chains if it doesn't go in. Last putt from this distance Simon had, he missed. So let's see if he can correct that. It was a little left. Oh. And that was left as well. Oh. Shaky all you want to – I mean, sure, it's been a little slow for Simon. He's nine under. He is in the mix right now. He is not yeah. out of – contention right now as eagle takes his par he's only five back that is one slip up away from being right back in it and that slip up can happen right here on the 16th hole how many birdies were on the last one i was curious oh yeah there were only three cole radolin isaac robinson and simon lazat and they all came in the last like three groups for the longest time there were no birdies. It was windy. It was windy, and the hole is 960 feet, and a great drive leaves you 450. Well, I mean, I, I do think that the wind was was it was tough to get into the good spot. Yes, off the tee. Yeah. You really had to gamble a lot. 16 is a, a 396 foot hole that plays um, really hard now that there's an island, a, a, just a random circle of OB around this hole. Yep, and then they put this pine tree that Simon's going to hit right there, which usually shapes the perfect shot into the hole, and that pine tree will keep you out of bounds, and you'll have to take a, bo a bogey or a double. Simon, en route to shooting a five under round one, did take a five on 16, so he has not yet found the island safely. I like that play, the hyzer through the gap. Just to safely get you on the island, set yourself up with a 33-foot downhill putt. 
Kevin more than likely trying to attack the middle with a left to right shaping shot, but it's not going right or it barely is enough. I like the putter play here because of the height you can give it. You can almost go over that tree. Mm. And if you go over the tree, then you're at least guaranteed island at some point. It is not a mandatory drop zone like Paul's mentioning. You get to go where you crossed. And unfortunately, Brad doesn't cross anywhere because he hits the last phantom branch. That was a good looking shot. It was. I really liked it out of his hand and just unfortunate result. Now Simon from the drop zone and that was a tentative run. I'm sure in round one, he got a little bit saucier and then found the OB again. Brad, very tentative as well. Eagle has a chance to open up the first double-digit lead. Two shots. Or, I mean, uh, double yeah, two, two, yeah, two, two shots. Yeah. And he doesn't do it. And, I mean, it, Why I did I, if I don't fumble the words, it comes out nice, and then we have time, and then he just goes and misses while I'm, my tongue's just fumbling around. Well, it's been a long day. So no birdies, two bogeys, and one missed opportunity for Eagle from the edge of circle. The holes break down a little bit tougher in round two. 33% birdie in round one, down to 25 in round two. A few more pars this time around. Hole 17, par 4, 840. Out of bounds Ooh. all on the left-hand side right here. That road is out of bounds as well. And might as well say those bushes are all out of bounds because if you land in them, you are not yeah. coming out with a very much distance. Uh, right to left crosswind. So this was playing pretty tough. Kind of a headwind. The, tr the trick with the hyzer play is going long enough. Yep. Because if you start hyzering too soon... The out of bounds comes in very quick. Eagle just, that's an unfair advantage. I mean, it's a skill, but my gosh, what a weapon. That is such a good shot. On the left side of the fairways, you see Kevin also lining up the hyzer. Smoked. This is just as good as Eagle's, if not better. Wow. I don't know if we're going to see anyone come into play here, but you can see a ridge along the line of where other people are down that fairway. If it goes down the slope, then you are out of bounds. The OB is at the top part of that ridge, and Simon is probably 30 feet away from that OB line. Brad's going to go down the middle. He needs to get this on Anheuser. If he doesn't, it will be really bad, and that's too much Anheuser. So it's very finicky, the angle control you have to have off of the tee here. Too much, you bleed into the hill, not enough, and you're going to be OB, so he makes the right play. This is tough. This is dropping. E this is bad. Bad, and I don't believe that it ever crossed in bounds, but I think... I think the group is going to give him that because it's so close. Heiser and the whole way. That is a K. Okay. Really oh, good. Yeah, good approach. Where Brad is about to take his next shot is a huge difference from where it initially crossed. Now, I will say for, I don't know for certain as Eagle's approach comes up short. I don't know for certain that it didn't cross and bounce, but I was watching this live. And from the angle that the, they showed earlier, it definitely looked from, from the perspective that I think we had at home like it didn't quite cross back and bounce. So Kevin's forehand approach is going to be on the hillside. Yeah, it's pretty close, though. One of the rules that helps every all the players benefit, benefit to the benefit player. To to the it's player. one of the only rules that uh, we have on our side. It's the it's the rule that allows you to cheat, you know, and that's nice. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If you can't say for sure, then you got to lean. It's like tie you, to the runner. Tie goes to the runner. Absolutely, it's the way it should be. And. 
and Brad. Paul, don't lie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, you know, I was going to say, I was thinking that when, when he was putting that initially, I was like, you know. But Brad able to get the bogey, and now he is even par for the round. Takes advantage of the good break, which is, which is the call that he got, you know. Kevin in for the birdie. And once again, Eagle and Kevin have just not played the same round at all, yet they are <laughs> essentially, they're tied now. They're tied. Well, no, I think, yeah, no, tied up. Yep, you're right, 100%. <laughs> Who's going to birdie the next one? Eagle. So Kevin pars, Eagle birdies. That's the way it's been going. Nice birdie for Simon as well. Birdie bogey birdie for his last three holes. Staying on the front part of the leaderboard. Bradley moving down a little bit. And then, of course, we have our two leaders. Hole 18, par 4, 660. Up the hill, out of bounds right, out of bounds left. Straight up the hill. Tight gap to low ceiling. <laughs> You want to sneak something around the branches or underneath them or through, get to the corner, and then you have a left to right shot into a really tight, really tight green. I think, I think we're only probably 200 feet away from the pin off the tee. <laughs> you just go through the woods and go straight to it. It's just, it is so far. This hole just keeps on going and going and going. What if you had to go straight through the trees? What would the par be? I mean, with the OB or with, with no, if the OB it. is gone, it'd be a par 12. Yeah, I think so. Par 12? Yeah, first ever par 12 that's only 500 feet away. Mm, Simon catches the trees, but luckily it stays in bounds. So I've seen a lot of people hit those trees and shoot left Eagle or right. Going backhand turnover, a lot of speed. Wow, speed and angle. Somehow he is able to put the brakes on at the top corner. That's essentially the perfect landing zone. What a shot. Brad going forehand. This is this is good for a par play. For a par play. I mean, but that's in bounds. And really, I don't think Brad is tr I mean, with him going forehand, I think he's saying I'm playing for par. Yeah. There's only a few players in the game as Simon. Does oh he bounce over the line? Oh, oh the line. boy. Spotter wasn't even looking. Could have knocked him right in the noggin. There's only a few players in the game that I think have the forehand power to get into position to birdie this hole. I would say there's less than 10 people at this tournament that can do that. And, and Brad is not one of those players. So, yeah, I mean, playing for part of this hole is actually great. Averaging 4.19. And that's what Kevin's deciding to do. Play for par. Even with a good drive. Yeah, he is putting himself. I think he has a sidearm to get to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I don't know if I but like that because I. With that flippy choice that he has, look how soft that looks. Are you kidding me? Is that going to have enough to get there? Yes. <sighs> mm. It looks even softer than the before he was injured forehand. It, it does. Sit down. Ooh, wow. He's dancing around that line. He is, man. Hits the branch off the tee. He bounces through the shoe. Through the shoe over the rope on the second. But that one that one's a good shot. Yeah, yeah. That it's not bouncing any luck. Yeah. Nice part nice play for par. Mm hmm Yep. I like that. Tell you, this hole will be a very interesting hole to watch unfold in round three as players try to jockey for making the cut going into the final round. There's no cut. There's actually. no cut. Yep, there's no cut. Oh, I didn't know that. I just assumed before round event. Oh my gosh, a little thinnest, heavy on the height. Thinnest band of all the bands, and he just squared it up. Well, this will be an interesting hole to see finish out, regardless of the scenario. But come round four, yeah. if it's a close event, this is going to be an exciting finish just because the difficulty on it is a full-on uh, 9.8 out of 10. Northwood Black holding on to the only 
10.10, 10 10.0 .10, 10 out of 10. Eagle lost opportunity. A couple of interesting misses from him on the putting green, but bogey free. Only one bogey for the event between or two total for Kevin and Eagle in total. Yeah. But one each essentially is the shortest way to say that. They have a two shot lead again, even though it was getting close. They've once again kept separation between them and the attackers. But Anthony Barella with the course record nine under shooting his way up the leaderboard tied with Chris Dickerson. I'm very excited to see this card play in the third round because all four of these guys are attacking this course so well. Kevin Jones just out there doing it. Eagle McMahon six under a piece. That is some good scoring in the yes. wind out here on this course. But Anthony Barella taking the unfortunate bogey on 16, but he had an opportunity with the par there to shoot the first double digit round here at Kensington Meadows. It's coming. It's coming, I think. If the wind is down, I think double digits is going to get hit and it's just going to remind yeah. me how much closer I am to retiring because this course is so, so hard. I cannot believe people are touching those numbers at the same time I very much can. Yeah. Halfway through the event here at the playoff, we have got two more rounds to go. Hopefully the sunshine remains and the conditions only improve. Excited, excited to bring you the last two rounds here. We'll see you tomorrow.